In this video, we are going to look at significant figures and measurements, starting with some significant figures practice. So uh, in section one, it just says indicate how many significant figures there are in each of the following measured values. Um, and so all we're doing is using our rules for recognizing significant figures, which I've gone ahead and added over here for us to refer to throughout this activity. But feel free to refer to your notes while you're practicing recognizing significant figures because it does take some time to get used to these rules but with enough practice it will be really easy for you to count significant figures so in number one um, we're looking at number one and we're trying to find a rule that applies to it so the first rule of significant figures says you should start counting at the first non-zero digit so we're going to start with the first zero the first digit that is not a zero. So this very first number, the two, isn't a non-zero number, so we'll start counting there. And any digit that's non-zero is significant. And looking at this value, I see that there are no zeros here. So every single digit in this number is a significant digit. So both rules one and rules two can be used to answer this first one. So we start counting at the two, and I count one, two, three, four, five significant figures. So the first one is a five. Moving on to number two, um, I s notice first thing in number two that I do have a zero. So I'm going to have to pay careful attention to these rules three, four, and five that apply to zeros. So I'm looking at that zero. It's not a trailing zero. So number three doesn't apply. Um, so not number three. Uh, number four says zeros between two non-zero numbers are always significant. And this zero is between two non-zero numbers, the one and the seven. So it is always going to be significant. So we're going to start counting at our first non-zero number, which would be the one. And then we are going to include that zero in our count of significant figures because it is between two non-zero numbers. So we're going to count, uh, let me switch colors here. We're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six significant figures. Everything there is significant. So our answer is six significant figures. Number three. I have some zeros again, so I have to pick a rule that applies to number three. Let's erase some of this mess over here. Let's see. All right. So number three, uh, I have zeros, once again, that are between two non-zero numbers. Between two non-zero numbers. So that would be rule number four. And they are always significant. Even though the zeros are right next to each other, both of those zeros are sandwiched between non-zero numbers. The one and the three are both non-zero numbers. So we're going to start counting at the first non-zero number, which would be the one. And we're going to keep counting until we get to the end. So we have one, two, three, four significant digits here four significant digits. Okay, number four. Uh, I see that I have a zero. It's not between two non-zero numbers though. This zero is actually at the beginning. Um, so that's what we call a leading zero. So instead of using rule number four, this time we're going to use rule number five. Leading zeros, or and it tells us there are zeros at the beginning of a number, are never significant. So this zero here is not a significant digit because it's a leading zero. Another way we can know that is by going back to rule number one, which says that we start counting at the first non-zero number. So this is a zero. That is not a non-zero number, so we don't count that one. We skip. And we start counting at the first non-zero number, which would be the six. Um, and then we count from there. So here we have one significant figure, two significant figures, three significant figures. So our answer here would be three. All right, on to the next page. Looking at number five. 
This time, we have zeros that are sandwiched again. They're sandwiched between some non-zero numbers, so that brings us to rule number four. They're always significant. Start counting at the first non-zero number, which would be the one. And we have one, two, three, four significant figures here. Four significant figures. Number six. I look at this and I see that we have zeros at the beginning of the number and at the end of the number. So we might have to apply several rules here. We don't have any in-betweens. So we don't need rule number four. But we need to pay attention to our leading zeros, the ones up at the beginning of the number. And we also need to pay attention to our trailing zeros, the zeros at the end of the number, which there's only one here. So some of those zeros are significant, maybe, and some of them are not significant. We need to figure out which is which. Let's start at the beginning of the number with those leading zeros. And our rule tells us that leading zeros at the beginning of a number are never significant. So we know none of these zeros are significant. We start counting at the first non-zero number, which would be this three right here. So we have one significant figure two significant figures, and last, we need to decide whether this trailing zero is significant or not. So let's look at rule number three. It says trailing zeros at the end of the number are significant if and only if they are to the right of a decimal point. So we need to look back in our number and figure out if there's a decimal point. Um, and looking back, so I'm going to go back this way. And here is a decimal point. This zero would be to the right of that decimal point, so it is a significant digit because it's to the right of a decimal point. So we have one, two, three significant figures here. That one was a little tricky, but we got through it just by following our rules and making sure we looked at each section. Number seven, we have 14.600. We don't have any leading zeros, but we do have some trailing zeros here. Uh, so we're looking back at our trailing zero rule number three, and we need to say, um, are those zeros to the right of a decimal point? And why, yes, we found the decimal point, decimal point's right here, and those zeros are to the right of the decimal point, which makes them significant. So when we're counting our significant figures, we start at the first non-zero number, which would be the one, and then we count one, two, three, four, five significant figures. Everything's significant because those zeros are to the right of the decimal point. All right, number eight. We have a bunch of leading zeros. We don't need to look at our trailing zeros rule, but we do need to continue to look at our leading zeros rule leading zeros at the beginning of a number are never significant. So all these zeros, even though some of them are to the right of the decimal point, they are never ever significant if they are leading, meaning they are at the very beginning of the value. And we can also remember this from rule number one, once again, which says that we start counting only when we hit the first non-zero number. So when we look at this, I see zero, not going to count that one, another zero, not going to count that one, another zero, nope, another zero, oh, we finally got to the first non-zero number, which is that one, and that is the only significant figure here. So if this uh, number eight, we only have one significant figure or significant digit. Number nine, we have a whole bunch of trailing zeros. All these zeros here are trailing zeros. We need to look at rule number three. Trailing zeros are only significant if they are to the right of a decimal point. Well, looking at this number, there is no decimal point, so none of those zeros are going to be significant. But the non-zero number is significant. So just the seven, that's the only significant digit in number nine. So we have one significant figure once again. Number 10, we don't have a leading zero, we do have a zero sandwiched in between some non-zero numbers. 
And then we have a zero that's a trailing zero at the very end of our number. So we need to look at rule four and rule five. So that zero between the two non-zero numbers, we know that one is going to be significant. That one we're going to count. But the zero at the end, whoop, I circled the wrong rule. It's not a leading zero, it's a trailing zero. So let's circle the correct one. We know that trailing zero is only significant if it's to the right of a decimal point. So looking at our number, we do have a decimal point, and that zero is to the right of it, so we're going to check that as significant as well. Now that we've done that, let's come back to rule number one and start counting at our first non-zero number. That would be the three, and we'll count one, two, three, four, five, six. Six significant figures here. Number 11. Uh, we don't have any leading zeros. No zeros are sandwiched. All we have are our trailing zeros. So we're looking at those trailing zeros and deciding are they to the right of the decimal point or not. If they're to the right of the decimal point, then they are significant. All these zeros are to the right of the decimal point, so they are all significant. So looking at rule number one, we will start counting at the first non-zero number. One, two, three, four, five significant figures here. And then last but not least, number 12. Looking at number 12, we have some zeros that are sandwiched. So we're looking at rule number four. Zeros between two non-zero numbers are always significant. So all of these will be significant. And then we're going to start counting at the first non-zero digit, which would be the three. And we'll count one, two, three, four, five, six significant figures here.